It's a bit of fun. This is Ben, Liam and Val on Nova. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. It's just Ben in the studio this morning. Uh, Liam and Val are not in. They're in, in the, at work, but they're not in the studio. I don't know what they're doing. It's five past six in the morning, and there is no Liam or Bell. Um, they will be reprimanded for their deeds. Oh, here comes Bell. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, well, if you cast your eyes over the show, yeah, a few holes. Yeah, who cares about the holes Just in the show, Bell? To... You've got to be in the show for the show to go to air. Well, you could have you could have PA'd us and said the show was starting. I like to think that you know the show starts at six. It's well, you six said we're past running late. Six. You said it was. Oh, we got oh, a bit of time. Here he is, Liam. Yes, right. yes. At least I came in with some haste. Liam oh, strolled in. Oh, <laughs> See, Liam came in much cooler than you, Bill. You kind of you came in. You were on air freaking out. Ooh, I, I wasn't don't know freaking out. Are. Go back and check the tapes. I was laughing. No, it's funny. The show just sneak up on you sometimes. Like it's, <laughs> that weekend, honestly, it went so quick. It honestly just feels like just we were here. It was 9 a.m. on Friday, but we back. I guess we that are. really does and point out the difference between us because you've come in and been like, yeah, weekend. And I was like, yeah. the show's empty. Bill started talking about all the holes in the show. Oh, it's you... such producer chat. Yeah. You're on air now. You just don't worry about it. You just, you know. Well, then did you feel the holes? Not really, no. So you came in late and you didn't feel the holes. <laughs> tisk <Really>? tisk. <laughs> Um, what are you doing? I was running the show, making it go to air because people pay the company money for ads to go to air, Bill. Yeah, okay. Right? Yes. 132410 is our number. We're all here now. We would love to do the 610 quiz, but we need callers for that. 132410. This is what you tune in for, the team camaraderie. Uh, <laughs> you tune in and you know every morning you're going to have Ben there, Liam's going to be there, Bell's going to be there, we're all going to be we're gonna be having a bit of fun, uh, just keeping you entertained, Melbourne. Oh, wild scenes on Friday night. I'm just sitting there on the couch, just you know, just about to have some dinner and enjoy a nice little movie on Netflix. And I open up my, my phone, the social media app Instagram. I, I look at one of the stories there and, oh, my God, what do I see? Air a hard launch. Bell Jackson's hard launch. I call out to my wife. I say, this bee's just hard launched. I'm running around. I can't believe it. I mean, the group chat's firing off. I call Ben. He answers the phone before saying hello. We say, she's hard launched. He was doing the same thing at his house. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> running around like... So what? And then what's so going on? You know? Do we launch. count a story as a hard launch? Yeah, mate. That to be a That's as bad as hard as it gets. Especially That's your story. Like, he was, like, curling you. Ah, uh, he was deadlifting me, actually. Um, Looks more like a curl. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah that's, that's a that's a hard launch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's is that hard if I got a guy to like bench press me or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's a hard uh, launch. That's a hard launch. Yeah, no, I did, I did. But you guys, I mean, you guys have known about him for a while. Um, off air. Yeah, yeah. but it's, I mean, it's all it's all gobbledygook until you hard launch. You know, <laughs> it's all airy fairy. But uh, yeah. you can't go back from that. You know. Yeah. No. Nah, so uh, yes. His name is Christian, and he's very lovely. And he, we've been hanging out, yeah, for a little while now. Um, as you guys know, like my last relationship finished in like September last year, hmm. um, or start of September, end of October. Yeah. But uh, no, it's um, yeah, no. Nah, he's been really, really supportive of me, and like giving me like the best kind of summer, and it's it's been really, really lovely. Well, happy for you, Bill. Where'd Thank you meet you. him? He's <laughs> my gym coach, <laughs> instructor. Yeah. Real basic seen, stuff by me. <laughs> I've seen films about that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just kind of, we realised that, yeah, we're on the same page a lot of things and we complement each other really well. And mm-hmm. yeah, you know, we have fun. Like uh, he's saying, I'm deadlifting. Oh, if I get this wrong, he'll hate me. He's like deadlifting like something like a hundred and something kilos. So I said on Friday, well, why don't you try and deadlift me? Because I should be easier than that. And then oh. he couldn't. And then, yeah. So maybe I'm, maybe I weigh so more than he's I thought. Your, <laughs> if he's your gym coach, does that mean you get a free membership? Potentially, yes. Whoa. <laughs> Can he do sessions for us? I mean, come on. Like, surely there's mates. Uh, right. Yeah, mate, invite him to come around and deadlift you. He gets, he gets one free person like, to oh, give one. it to, oh, so yeah, um, okay. I'm the chosen one. So, Bill, uh, technically, is this your rebound? Okay, strong word. Um, <laughs> That's a pretty strong word. <laughs> Well, it just seems like I a mean, rebound. I, I, well, because the last relationship I was in, yeah, was uh, it was quite long, and mm-hmm. you know we were very serious, but um, that didn't work out. And I guess it's early days, and you could look at it that way. Yep. But like, it's a strong word. It's a and rebound, and I'm very happy, and we're happy. So I'm not just like oh, yeah, I'm you not can using be, yeah, him. Yeah, you can be happy in a rebound. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I would love to do thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Who was your rebound? 
Because, oh, 80% of women will say they're gym coach. <laughs> yeah, because Belle is gym coach. <laughs> I'm real predictable, aren't I? Yeah. Gym, gym coach, uh, dad from school. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, you know. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, right. As yeah, in, yeah, as yeah. Another yeah. dad. Yeah, well, I'm just, yeah, I'm just thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. of like, like rebound, like yeah, sort of yeah. the normal stories you hear. Or like, oh, he's my best friend. He was there the whole time. Oh yeah, that that's that's a bit of a classic. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. love to know who was your rebound. 13, 24, 10. Maybe you're still together. Maybe there's hope for Bell. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you didn't end so well. I don't know. I'm not going to be picky. 13, 24, 10. Yeah. Who was your rebound? Uh, we do have tons of prizes to give away as well. If you get in touch, you can remain anonymous for this one as well. Give away a gym membership. Uh, yeah, we'll has <laughs> got a free one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 13, 24, 10. Who is your rebound? We've got some great prizes up our sleeve to sweeten the deal if you get in touch. Uh, John joins us now. Who is your rebound, mate? Morning, guys. Uh, my rebound was my sister in law's sister. Your sister in law's oh, sister. So that's As in your ex's, your ex's sister's. No. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's my brother's wife. Ah. Oh, your brother's wife's sister. Brother's <laughs> okay. wife's sister. So the and way you said it, you tried to make it sound better, didn't you, John? So I can <laughs> so, see why you tried no, to confuse us there. No, brother's wife's sister, not brother's wife. He said his sister-in-law's sister. John, yeah, just one more, one more, one more time, John. One more time. The sister-in-law's sister. So he's, he's yeah, brother's right. wife's sister. So no, never, never. So now you got two brothers oh, okay. with two sisters. So it's my brother's wife's sister. Yes. Your brother's, brother's wife's sister. sister. Yeah, yeah right. so okay. you weren't, no, it's sort of, it's you weren't like, doing the dirty on your so brother. it's not as bad as I, yeah, yep. okay. I don't know why that was so confusing. That was like a riddle. That was like one of those, you know, <laughs> you know people tell you those things and like, and the surgeon dies and then, the yeah. you know. So what it was is two brothers. Yep. With yeah, yeah, two yeah. sisters. Yeah, nice. Yes. Yeah. Bit of a family affair there. That's good fun. <laughs> uh, Rochelle joins us now. Hello. Hello, Rochelle. Uh, you've called to tell us about your rebound this morning. Yes, it was my ex-partner's best friend. Oh. Yeah, so this is what I said before, Rochelle. It's like one of those people that was there the whole time and then suddenly, um, yeah, you uh, Well, it rebound. wasn't really that case. It was more my ex thought me and him were having a... Uh, little uh, scandal cheating session, uh, which didn't occur. My ex ended up breaking up with me for this random story he's created. Mm. So I thought, why not just make it true? Right. So, but the, so yeah, <laughs> ma- perhaps there might have been some feelings there and, and maybe the ex was sort of was Well, it did go it. on with the best friend for another two years. Right. Wow. wow. And are, they, are they still friends? Like you, you, the person you were no, with? And, no. No. Yeah. It blew up one night and I got a phone call and I didn't answer. Phone call if they haven't been friends. Yeah, wow. right. Wow. Well, Rochelle, um, to say thank you for coming on and sharing a personal story this morning, we'll give you a hundred dollar voucher to Jim's cleaning. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. No worries. And Rochelle. a couple of free sessions uh, from Belle's boyfriend. Yes. Um, so. <laughs> Jess in Melton, who was your rebound? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm from a small country town, and I was hanging out with my cousin, and uh, we missed the bus home and couldn't get home, and she just knew a guy with a car, so. I ended up with him, and right. 15 years later, it seems yeah, we're very married. much Jess. It seems yes, very much yeah. like your rebound just, was going to be your cousin. I don't know what just happened. Yeah. We all, we all you, were like, you, you oh said, my god! You said the words "small country town" yep. and "cousin." Yep. And, and then everyone, missed, and then, and then <laughs> everyone we, locked up in yeah. here. And he said, "We missed the bus." And I thought, "Oh, maybe it started raining, and you just started kissing." Hang on, so back up. <laughs> no, no. So, I was with my female friend, who's a cousin. Yep. She mm-hmm. called her friend. <laughs> yep. Right. And, yeah. then, and then, so your rebound was the friend that was called. Drove the car, yeah. Yes, yep. yep. He had a car, wow. he drove us home. 15 years later, we've been married and we've got two kids. I wow. love that, Jess. What kind of car was it? <laughs> it was, I didn't even know, Mitsubishi at the time, oh, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a subwoofer in the back. Yeah, don't worry, ladies. No. <laughs> it's good in the back. Nice, Jess, that's a nice meat cute, though. Like something yeah, it is. Film. Very sweet. We do yeah. meat cutes. This morning. Is it meet cute just for the for the dad in the room? Is it meet cute when you meet someone in like a romantic setting, yeah. kind of like in a movie? Correct. It's so like, so like, oh, you dropped like... your fork and then a hunky guy picks Correct. it up. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're meet. at the supermarket. I don't have any money to pay <laughs> for these groceries. And the guy yeah. behind you goes, I'll pay for them. And yeah. It's so cute. funny that the most romantic thing, <laughs> this scenario Ben could think of on the spot was you dropped your fork. <laughs> There's a hot guy. Like, picks it up for you. Yeah. Should we do, yeah, should we I do imagine, that? I imagine you're at a restaurant, you drop your fork. <laughs> 
Are you bend down to go get it. Yeah. Oh no, Jacob the Lord has already picked yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your yeah. eyes. Oh, meet. I suppose that's yeah. You've got a bit of pasta sauce on your chin, and yeah. he wipes it off. Let's do that. Uh, Let's my do that. Is did a you? Meet cute. <laughs> did you have a meet cute? Thirteen, twenty four, ten. Mm. I mean, we like my wife went to my school. We were in different year levels, no. and then we got together at a music festival no. like does, many years later. <laughs> does my meet cute count? My wife and I, before we knew each other, I was emceeing at a nightclub with Liam. Mm. Uh, and we were handing out Budweiser hats mm. and we gave my wife a Budweiser hat and that's when I added her on Facebook. Um, it's not like, mm, it's yeah. like kind of cute, but it's, it's like, I don't think like it's going to be in a love actually type movie. Was you know? there like a moment where like she said, can I have a hat? And you said, you know, okay. And then you dropped it and then she picked it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, there wasn't, there wasn't no, a moment wasn't like that. No, it needs, look, it needs to be <laughs> cuter than our stories. But if you haven't met cute, if yep. you, the way you met your partner feels like it's something from a movie. Yeah. And you always tell people this, 13, 24, 10 is our number. Number. I like it. 13, 24, 10. I'd love to get some meat cutes. Uh, Beck, how did you meet yours? Um, I was 16, walking out of school, playing on my phone, and I walked into a tree, and he laughed at me. Oh, yeah. Um, that's... <laughs> then the next day, he had to walk me out to make sure it didn't happen again. So, yeah, that's that's almost like one of those like goofy teen love yeah. type movies. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe you saw that. Wow, yeah. are you still yeah, together, Beck? Yeah, married with... One kid and another on the way. Wow. wow. Congratulations. Sounds like you everything's should, going um, well. You really should carve a love heart into that tree, Beck, and put your initials oh, in. Yeah. Yes. Have you gone back to that tree in a while, Beck? No, no. I was at the high school, so. Yeah, no. I guess kind yeah. of weird to go yeah. to a school and you're like, we met here. <laughs> With a knife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're just trying to carve the tree. <laughs> uh, Sarah in Williamstown joins us now. What's your meet you? Good morning. About 18 years ago, I was on my way to a friend's wedding in Vanuatu, flying out of Sydney, um, meeting all of the wedding guests in the lounge at Sydney Airport, accidentally tripped over my bag and literally fell into the arms of a man who Whoa. now has turned into my husband. Whoa. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that is, that's wow. the real deal right there. You fell for it. Is. Love that. So you fell into and their arms. And he's listening arms. now. I know he's listening. <laughs> and, and so what happened from there? Did you exchange numbers? Well, like, what happened? There was a bit of chemistry on the holiday in Vanuatu, but I was travelling with my parents. He was travelling with his mum. Yeah. Um, my dad embarrassed me. I fell over into his arms. My dad's like, oh, steady on. He hasn't even bought you a drink yet. Mm, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we exchanged numbers. He left a really lovely note under my hotel room door when mm. he was leaving. Yeah. And then I actually made the first move and called him up. Um, wow, right. And said that my car had broken down and it needed to be fixed. <laughs> and he was I've been his damsel in distress ever since. You really do oh, play the role well. Sarah, that I, is... I was in there, yeah. I was living my my fantasy rom com. Oh, I love up. that. No, that is that is textbook that story. Thank you so much. We're talking meet cutes right now. It's uh basically how did you meet your partner? It was a scene out of a movie, maybe. Uh Sarah, your your story is an actual movie, we're being told. What happened? Well, pretty close to a movie, but yeah. Yeah. Um so similar to the Julia Roberts Pretty Woman movie, I was actually quite young and working in the brothels. Mm-hmm. And um, a guy came in and asked for my company for an hour. And we went into the room and we started chatting and we didn't finish chatting. And then the hour was up and suddenly we'd get nutted out. Um, <laughs> so he wanted to meet up with me then after work, which I agreed to. And yeah. then... We developed a relationship from there. So you're the Julia Whoa. Roberts. You're you're the pretty woman in this story. Theoretically speaking, I was never a kept woman, but <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> so so are you still together or not? Um, we're not currently, but I mean, we've been dysfunctional for the last thirty years. Like he comes and goes, and comes and goes. I have never been with anyone else since. So well, right. Sarah, so, so it's been yeah. on and off for thirty years. For thirty years, and we have a son together. So. Wow! So even even that, like that, it's, it's on and off, sort of jaded love story. I mean, if I was a big big time Hollywood producer right now, <laughs> yeah. I would, you know, I'd be yeah, signing well, this he, story. He's no Richard Gere. <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, well, Sarah, incredible story. Thanks for giving us a buzz. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna give you a prize, Sarah, for sharing this morning. Um, what do you want? Oh, I, I got a Jim's cleaning voucher, or I got six bottles of wine. What would you rather? Oh, the six bottles of wine. Yeah, please. absolutely. Zonzo <laughs> yeah. Estate. Enjoy a perfect drop from the heart of the Yarra Valley. That's all yours, Sarah. We appreciate you sharing. It's 610. Hallelujah. It's 610. Maria Baronia, good morning. How's your weekend? Oh, very 
very good, very good, very um, very nice, oh. but very hot. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Well, look, I hope this doesn't ruin your week. 2,000 car parks could be removed oh. from Melbourne Airport because of renovations. Bloody renovations. Um, other than Tullamarine, can you name another Melbourne Airport? Moravin. Yep, yep, Avalon, Essendon, that also would have worked. Uh, the cheapest house in Victoria is for sale. How's this? I don't know. It could be an investment property or something around. Uh, oh. it, it costs 18 grand. It's pretty good. Oh, God. It's near, Very good. Yeah, it's near Nil. You know Nil? Oh, yeah, I think so. Not sure, but mm. yes. Okay, I don't know how you're going to go with this, but I. Oh, okay, yeah. here we go. Can you spell Neil for us, the town? E- okay, N E A L E. That's how you spell Locky Neil, but unfortunately, that's not how you spell Neil, the town. Um, you might have driven uh, driven through it if you've gone to Adelaide or something like that. 13, 20, 14, give us a buzz if you want to play, if you can spend Neil, because this one might stump a few people. I think it's going to be tricky. Uh, Josie and Clyde, can you spell Neil? Mm. No. Uh, this is a trickier question than we think. I think you will. I don't think everyone's expected to know how to spell. And even if you have, the, you know, the idea of retaining it. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben, in... should we should we say it? No, um... I, I I think people will figure it out. I think it's I think it's pretty known. There's Are only one sure? way to find out. Let's find out. Ben, do you know how to spell Neil? I do. My sister-in-law lives down that way. Oh, wonderful. Hey. N-H-I-L-L. Yes. Yeah. Nahil. Nahil. <laughs> well done. It's fun to say Nahil and the locals <laughs> hate it. Uh, there's a by-election in Melbourne on the weekend. Can you name a political party in Australia that isn't Labor or Liberal? Uh, the Greens? Yeah, the Greens. A former pie star, Dane Swan's 40th birthday party, has been going for one month now in Las Vegas. That's amazing. Uh, which movie is set in Vegas that features a tiger in a hotel room with Mike Tyson? Uh, the Hangover. Oh, what a classic. Last one here. Katy Perry performed randomly in a private gig in a mansion in Q on the weekend, of all places. Can you spell Q? No. Um, we, <laughs> we just want you to finish these lyrics. Her lips taste like cherry lipstick. lipstick. No, oh, Ben. <laughs> What's the lipstick? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russell in Glen Waverley. Can you finish the lyrics? I kissed a girl and I liked it. The taste of her cherry chapstick. Done it. <laughs> Closet Perry fan. <laughs> I love it, Russ. I think one of the most dry deliveries <laughs> you know we've ever had. You came, you saw, you <laughs> conquered, you did what was needed. Uh, thank you so much for playing. Um, Russell, you get to pick the next song we play this morning. So, Russell, if you're a Katy Perry fan, are you a Reese Maston fan? I'm just looking for- Or are you more of a plain white tease kind of guy? Oh, it's what you do to me. Oh, it's what you do to me. What are you feeling, Russ? Yeah. Huh? Second one, second one, yeah. Second yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. One. They were both ass choices, Russell, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know who picked them, but I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you are hey, is that, both is that of you, those. Bill? Is that... <laughs> Um, that was no. a- actual <laughs> terrible. You off both of those? Yeah, this morning, I, would, I would play neither of those. I would rather just the normal Nova music than that. <laughs> Shall we? Should we play that Katy sucks. Perry, I Kissed a Girl, then? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, hey, Russ, I mean, you, you knew the lyrics. Would you rather I Kissed a Girl? Oh, I'd rather kiss a girl myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well... We're all having a bit of fun this morning. Um, but, uh, Russ, you shouldn't have gone back to Russ. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Am I getting trouble? This was never the way I planned. Not my intention. God, I had a nightmare of a Sunday. I tell you what, Ben and Bell. I mean, you guys hate that I get my groceries delivered. Oh, it's the worst. And I, Here look, we are again. Yeah. I no. feel like it's a weekly thing because my... you get them delivered and then you go, oh, it didn't work. Yeah, just quickly, my problem with getting your groceries delivered is obviously the employees at Coles or Woolies pick the produce for you. Mm. And I know they'd be picking the bag of soft grapes. You know what I mean? Well, like, look, at, totally, at the moment, sometimes fun. I've noticed if you order five bananas, they might chuck in six or seven. They'll give you a couple of older ones, but they right. just, they sort of, they look after you a little bit. Right. Now, 
I get it. It's super lazy. It's it's probably yes. for like old people or people that you know can't can't leave the house for whatever reason. You live right near a supermarket. You could have a nice yeah, stroll but it's, there, it's, it is nice. Like sort of Sunday, it's there. You walk the dog. You come back. It's there. You start your walk sort of the meals dog to the for the supermarket and back. Mm. No, then you're gonna carry the bags back. You're mm. not thinking about it. Um, Burn some calories carrying them. So a lot of groceries, Bill. A lot of groceries. <laughs> There's two of you. <laughs> That's a big shop. Anyway, so look, and I probably never would have done this if I just lived by myself. I probably would, you know, when I was single, I was just going to the shops. But mm. this is more my my wife's thing. She she likes it. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I I think I'm on your team now. I think I'm officially over it. Whoa. Good. I, th- I think I'm I'm officially done. How's this? Five a.m. Sunday morning. The doorbell goes off. Wow. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. So I'm I'm rudely awakened. Mm. It's the it's the we we wake up very early for this show, so yeah. it's sort of like it's the big day you get to sleep in. And in in, in the haze of that, it goes off again. It's a double. It's just a like double. A, it's like a under the door. And I'm thinking, Jesus, are we being robbed? I mean, very polite robbers <laughs> to sort of like, but maybe they're checking, you know, is there anyone home before yeah. you come in and steal everything? I don't know. And um, Sarah leans over and she goes, oh, it's just the groceries. Like, I'll just leave it. They'll leave it at the door. Like, they're supposed to just leave it. I don't even know why. Then the knocking starts. What? Dude's just knocking on the door, 5 a.m. on a Sunday. No bother. A and psychopath. Then, oh, I know. And then it gets, like, more aggressive. Like, the knock is just like, <laughs> answer the door. I'm thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> so I'm in my jocks and I sort of, like, get dressed and I'm, like, so grumpy and I go to the door. And for some reason... Sarah has ordered an effing tequila with the weekly shop because right. she just thought we were having a Mexican night in a few weeks and she thought it would be good to have one in the collection. Uh, this guy can't oh. leave until you sign and get your ID and prove uh, it. So that's he was just going to keep knocking until everyone in the neighbourhood was awake. That's so annoying. Oh, man. I didn't the know worst. that. So they, they do it like 24 hours a day. I suppose so. I, reckon I think we were probably the first one of the day. Because you live so close to the shopping centre. <laughs> yes. the thing. Yeah, as <laughs> Belle was saying earlier, because I'm sort of about 100 metres from a major chain grocery store, um, his van, you know, it was still idling. Like he's just sort of left the yeah, car. Yeah, he's like, these people are so lazy, I'm just going to F up their day. Well, they, just, they so you can eventually did. get out of day. That's uh, another bed. reason I don't like getting your grocery shopping delivered. Absolutely. I mean, and look, it was very... Very annoying, but it was very convenient that my groceries were all there, um, so I didn't have to go to the shops. You know, even though I had a lot of time yesterday because I was up at five a.m. It's officially here: the 2024 sexy word of the year. Is that a thing that we do? The sexy. Apparently. Also, it's a bit early to be calling sexy word of the year, right? Or is it more like they're trying to get the trend started? Well, it's already a trend, actually. My money's on throb. <laughs> yeah, throb is a very sexy word. Yeah, but it's been around for ages. Yeah, I'm no, bringing no, it no, back no, no. though. It's nah, the, word, the word of the year is baby girl. That's two words. That's no, 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 no. It's one word, baby girl. What is that? Can you use it in a sentence? Uh, yeah. So Jacob Elordi is famously a baby girl. No, he's a um, grown man. I've no, seen, no, I've seen no, photos of him. No, he's very cute. Um, he's just very like, he's like sweet looking. So you've got like an F boy who's like, you know, wouldn't go there, but then you've got a baby girl and will I, I will say Is this, this, I have never like, heard very, this. They're like, like you just like, they're a bit hopeless and they're like, they're a little bit like. But wouldn't he be a baby boy? Yeah. No, it's different. Liam is a baby girl. Oh, <laughs> now I'm coming around to the trend. <laughs> I would say you're a baby girl. Why? Ben's not a baby girl. What right. is it, what is that? Because you're like you're a bit vulnerable and like you just kind of want to like take care of you and like oh no shield him protect him. Yeah, I'm a He's baby so girl. Cute, so I've, like... I've always said baby girl is a cool word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And I, Ben's yeah, not a baby girl. Respectful right. baby. Girl. Sorry, yeah. man. Sorry, ben, you can't be a baby girl. I, I hate this, but Ben's probably more a daddy. Right. Oh, oh so there's f boys, there's daddies, and there's baby girls. Yeah. Oh, I scratched that. Now I I feel like mine sucks. I'm happy with daddy. <laughs> you got a way better one. And I feel like that was probably the sexy word of the year a couple of years ago, but that sounds cooler. You are here with daddy, Liam and Bell. <laughs> nope. Daddy, baby girl, and Bell. <laughs> Our next guest hails from the Gold Coast, but is now adored worldwide. Since leaping up the charts in 2016, she's collabed with Travis Barker, Keith Urban, and even Ed Sheeran. Everybody, everybody. Now she's back for another season as a judge on Australian Idol. Please welcome Amy Sharp.
Hey, Michelle, good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Very well. Congrats on the new song as well. Thank you. Beautiful Eyes. I mean, it's kind of my earworm song at the moment. I've been annoying the guy, haven't I? Yes. You're, just like, you're doing it again. <laughs> Liam is in the office and he's just singing it 24 oh, 7. And then I was like, he's singing it again. He goes, Oh, really? And was I? I? I hum it a lot. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do too when I can't hit the notes. Yeah. Just gonna... <laughs> um, very jealous, Amy. Blink. Been hanging out a lot. Yeah. yeah. How's that been going? I need them to leave. Like, <laughs> they're taking over my life. Um, it's been so cool, though. Like, mm. honestly, I keep. Anytime, because I've watched a few shows now and we kind of yeah. like have been with the whole team and whatever. And I just think, I just think back to me being in high school and like begging my parents to get me tickets and let me go to their show and to think I'm just like hanging out. And yeah. wow. it's, it's just wild. Like, that's obviously not your style of music. Like, that's not that how like you would play music. But I, I know like you and your husband, like big fans. And I know that I feel like that's the type of music that you a fan of mm. would there ever be like a bit of a, a crossover do you think i think like if you really t- sort of dive into my stuff i borrow a lot of punk melodies yeah um, okay. in and put them into pop and i think that's um i i find it's kind of like my secret weapon you know because like there's so many sort of younger artists that don't know of that emo era yeah. and, and like i borrow so many ideas from it so um but yeah i i'm a absolute like punk pop pop punk like tragic yeah yeah Yeah. and absolute like icons of the game as well they've been walking around a lot getting paps with the kardashians and whatnot you said that like you grew up such a big fan and you'd die for tickets and you'd be begging for tickets and stuff did you tell them stuff like that do you say hey i used to you know have posters of you or do you just keep it pretty cool um i've kept it pretty cool for a while this has been like a like I've been massaging this, I guess, friendship with the guys for like a long time, mm. you know. Um, Tom actually, no one really knows this, but I, I met Tom at a meet and greet like probably 10, 12 years ago and I gave him my EP. Wow. And, um, yeah, and he actually got me a meeting with a label who didn't take take me off, obviously. But um, it was, he really like kind of went there for me That's awesome. early on. And then we kept in contact and then my song blew up and then all of a sudden I was talking to Mark and Travis and, and it just became just full circle. So Because of a meet and greet and you gave your EP? Yeah. Wow. I, I obviously made a really big impact um, of desperation, I think. He could, he could <laughs> smell the desperation I mean, on me. Since you're here as well. I actually have a recording of my, my know. Just listen to that in your own time there. Do people do uh, that to you though? Do people give oh, you their yeah, music? Oh yeah, all the time. And I, I I honestly know what it's like. So mm. anytime someone gives me something, if I've got the time, yeah. I'll I'll find them on Instagram or whatever and say, hey, I'm enjoying this. Um, there's, there's not usually a lot you can do. Like maybe yeah. if it's any good, I'll pass it on to some other managers that I know. But yeah. What about with Australian Idol? Do you get people coming up to you going, please get me on the show? Would you get that as well? Oh yeah. And people... <sighs> Like, do you, like everything just went crazy as soon as I did not was not expecting what um like t- television yeah. does yeah and just, yeah so just uh, everything online and social media and everything just goes bonkers yeah um and even out there in the real world people I'm not used to so many people knowing my actual face. Yep. Like usually yeah, I'm yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not walking around in Adidas in a top knot, usually if I, <laughs> if I have my hat on, no one knows who I am. Yeah, but yeah. People are starting to know my actual yeah. face. So oh, now it's yeah. a bit crazy. But yeah, everyone's like, yeah, can you can you say yes if I come on the show? Like, Has anyone ever like auditioned for you in like Coles or something? They're like, just give me just give me thirty seconds. Here we go. Like, yes. Oh god, I know, yeah. but I'd love that. <laughs> I love that. I also love that how you can you can. You can that, you know, it's a problem that they recognise your face now, but before you could click in and out of shark mm. mode, you're like, yeah. just, if I just wear, yeah, wear <laughs> Nike terrible. and have my hair down, it's like no one's going to know. We always say, I always say to Shane before we go out to like a mm. dinner, if there's some like some tool I got to yeah. schmooze or something, it's mm. like, can, can I just wear a hat? He's like, no, nah, it's hair. It's a, <laughs> it's a hair it's night. A hair it's a, night. It's a, it's a, a shark up, night. <laughs> where you're at it, ass. Amy Shark in studio this morning. We thought while we got you here, why don't we play a game of One Bar Starman? <laughs> One bar star man on the radio I'm really, really fast Just listen to me go Yeah, here's the thing, Amy A lot like Tom DeLong, like hearing your EP for the first time going you know, that's a hit. Um, I'm, I'm basically on the same level, you know I can just like, <laughs> and just, like and pick yeah. songs really quick I know a song when I hear one 
Um, and uh, normally I can do it in like one bar. Mm-hmm. So I'd like okay. to challenge you this morning, see okay. if you can. Well, I, just just so everyone knows, you obviously do this all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> if I do absolutely. crush you, it's embarrassing. Yeah, no, yeah, it will be. It will be. And there's also been a theme the last couple of weeks of Liam like beating up on people that have played. So, um, <laughs> you know, Budra? Oh, so you're, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a poor a little Butch. Sweet boy. I smashed him. Absolutely... I absolutely dominated him. It was actually embarrassing. His oh. mum was outside and I was like, I sort of felt bad for him. Like, <laughs> He's got to learn. Kid's got to learn. <laughs> he does. This yeah. industry is tough, kid. Yeah, it's tough, man. Uh, so the way it works, is, if you haven't heard it before, we've got five songs. Um, if you think you know it from the very first bar, you're buzzing with your name and you have a shot at it. I need the artist or the song title. If you don't get it right, the other person gets a shot at it. I've gone for the theme of Australian Idol just to kind of to sharpen it up a little bit. So mm-hmm. this is either people that have been on Australian Idol, uh, Gee, maybe thanks. they've judged Australian <laughs> Idol. <laughs> All right, here we go. Song number one. Amy. Oh, I know that. Ricky Lee. Bang. <laughs> Yeah. Kill me. It also looks bad on Liam. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. just our mate from the, from the <laughs> work base. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I just didn't buzz in quick enough. All right. Liam starts to sweat. All right. Here we go. Song number two. Amy. Oh, geez, I mean, Jesus. Amy. If oh, I don't God. get this, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. That would be myself. I know. Oh, it is best of three. I'm sort of on the back foot here. I'm finally, really sweating. Finally, somebody takes it to Liam. Oh, gee whiz. It's been a while. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, all right, don't let go. me win. Oh, don't, no, don't I don't, I'm not intending on doing that. No, not at all. <laughs> Song number three. Liam. Lee Harding Wasabi. Very good. Uh, song number four. Liam. Amy. Oh, I feel like you got the uh, yeah, no, okay, A. It's okay. It's okay. It's Liam okay. buzzed in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about me? I don't know. What about me? Oh, oh damn to the wire. <laughs> damn to the wire, shark. What are we on? Two each? Two yeah. each. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is song number five. Buzzing with your name. One bar star, man. It's Liam Stapleton versus Amy Shark. Song number five. Amy. Liam. Whoa. Oh, I know it. I thought the tactic was you buzzed in. Yeah. Yep. You might not have known it. Now you're trying to process it. I like the game plan. I can play it again for you if you want to hear a little bit of it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know it. Come on. Come on now. It's, um. Come on. Come on. Yeah, no, no more than no, that. No, 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 no more than that. It's uh, only one bar. Let her it's, think. Um, Give it to me. It's, um. Give it to no, me. No, no, I know it. I know it. I know <laughs> it. I know it. Uh, come on now. No, 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 that's your turn, baby, these kids. These kids, trapped Woo! How'd I miss that? No one puts Liam in the corner. So close, Amy. That was close, though, man. I wouldn't be doing cartwheels. Yeah, look, you had me sweating. I'm not going to lie there. I didn't like that. That was an uncomfortable position for me. Amy Shark, always a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl on Nova. You are here with Ben Lehman Bell. She was in Sydney over the weekend watching Taylor Swift perform. Yeah, incredible. The list of uh, celebs that went to watch Taylor in Sydney, you got like Rebel Wilson, Tony Collette, the Veronicas. Uh, you had all kinds of people. Uh, Rita Ora was there. Do you remember that time um, Ben thought Tony Collette was a man? So, yeah. <laughs> so Ben. Like, Tony Collette, who's he? Well, there's your first problem. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know what Tony Collette does. Tony Tony Collette's super famous. She's um, an uh, actor, an actress. She was um uh Muriel's wedding, you know? You're terrible, Muriel. Um Also Tony Collette. Tony Collette to me sounds like um like a man from the eighties hosting a game show. Mm. No, yeah, it's it's Tony with an I. Right. Um and Tony Collette was also um really good in a movie called Hereditary, which is like an A twenty four movie. It's really scary. Yeah, that's right. Scary sort of movie. Yeah, she's the mum. What else is Tony Collette in? Uh, but yeah, no, so famous, famous Aussie actress. Mm. Yeah. And then Katy Perry was also performing in, uh, in Q as well on yes, the weekend. Yes, at the so mansion really party. everywhere. <laughs> and then there was also the, uh, over in Perth, there was the Elimination Chamber, the wrestling. The Shall elim- we just go around Australia um, and what events were on? And guess who was there? Rove. Rove was at the Elimination Chamber. <laughs> Ben's trying his hand at some celebrity goss. What? <laughs> well, you were doing the around the grounds of who was at Taylor. Yeah. Ben's and you, telling and us that Rove McManus yeah, was so at. You were doing the around the grounds, and for me, I, there's a big part of the audience that would have been keen on the Elimination Chamber and Rove, and you left those two out. <laughs> what the No, heck? I actually appreciate that, Ben. That was yeah. a good spread. You guys both really covered your bases there. Thanks, mate. <laughs> would you like to get out of the rental rat race? Do I have your attention? Well, you could buy a house for $17,000 here in Victoria. What? Yes, it is the cheapest house for sale in all of Victoria. 17 
thousand dollars. That's bloody good. It's yeah, a, it's a ha- it's standing. It's, it's like a, a it's a house on a mm-hmm. land. So I mean, if you've got mm. you know if you've you've maybe saved up like thirty grand or something for a deposit, you've been yep. working really really hard. Don't worry about it. Just like well, yeah, if you've got thirty grand, you just pay got... it off outright, yep. and then thirteen thousand know, dollars in change might, might be like two grand for stamp duty or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, potentially in like yeah other costs, and then I mean you might want to keep a little bit of the money maybe just for like a few little renovations around the place. Oh, so oh. It's, is it a little bit of a fixer upper, or is it just a like bit. a few licks of paint? That's sort of thing or yeah a little bit of a fixer upper um so it's in rainbow yep if you don't know where rainbow is um is. it's it's about so if you are doing the commute if, let's say you work in the cbd <laughs> the commute would be about four and a half hours one way <laughs> oh but you know sometimes so nine hours there and back but the the westgate when it locks up you know i mean yeah. if you're coming through like a a different side that's you're pretty much on the road for Less time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> basically. I mean, so, yeah, so that's probably the one. That's that's the first caveat okay. is it's four and a half okay. hours away, that's, one way. Yep. That's or you could watch a couple of movies. Yep, you, you get work of, from home. You get a lot of podcasting listened to. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. So it's Ten Lake Street in Rainbow. That's the suburb. If you try, if you're trying to Google it, Ten Sounds Lake Street. Sounds pretty. Um. And then this is the this is the the bio that the real estate agents put on there. They have put um this burnt out shell. <laughs> Comes as you see it in the photos. So yeah, there's a little, there's a little okay. bit, of, there's a little bit of work that needs and nor- to be done. Because normally they like to put a bit of mayo on the real estate agents. They like to sort of yep. talk it up and yep. talk about how it's a once yeah, in a lifetime yeah. opportunity. And every room has been damaged by either fire or water. <laughs> so that's okay. So there's there's double elements yep. here. So you sort of you just <laughs> you're just getting on top of the mold and the yep. water damage in one room. Yep. Oh no. Yep. The other room's burnt to a crisp. Yep. Um the person that must have previously lived there was obviously a hoarder. So there is Oh good. There is quite a lot of filth. Does it come with the stuff because some well, people like Yeah, stuff, I mean the agent you know? said everything you see in the photos goes with the property, no exceptions. Wicked. So you yeah, have to take all furnished. the stuff. Yeah, fully furnished. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, fully furnished. Um and then it says uh buyers should also note that the property has a demolition order. Um, the demolition has to occur by the 9th of May, 2024. So you do have to knock... You legally, you have to knock the house down. Tight turnaround. But um, you get like a month of enjoyment out of it before you have to knock it down. And does it have a roof? It's got a roof, yeah. Oh, um, that's pretty good. A few holes in it. Oh, yeah. um, but for 17k, can you complain? I mean, I'm all right. <laughs> get in the market. Oh, get in the market. How much does it cost to demolish something? Uh, it depends if you want to do it yourself. Pay someone to do it. Do it yourself, yeah. Ben. No. You can knock a house down. You can't knock a house down? No. Yes, you could. You can knock a house Sorry, down. Sorry, I know we're about to go into this. No, you can't. Yes, how you would can. You, ben, if you were to knock a house down by yourself, how mm. would you go about Start it? Start with the roof and go down. Like with what? I'd a hire, hammer? I'd hire a front-end loader. You you make these wild calls that you can do things like I this. I absolutely you can't. knock a house down. My brother, my brother did demolition for like 10 years. I know how to knock a house down. You didn't do the demolition. He did. Yeah, but I, that doesn't mean you vicariously know how to do it. Hard. You would, so if you start with a house, right, you take the sheets of tin off, then you take the roof off, then you'd go down from there. It's easy. And you get a bulldozer and to, knock it to over. To be fair, and when you, if you're gonna, you can't If you're going to demolish a house, you got to separate metal from like the bricks, and then a truck will come, take it, and they'll pay you for the scrap. Mm, well, 13, 24, 10, if you need to demolish your house, you know who to call. I'm not saying I'll or do ben. it for somebody for free. Well, I'm no. just saying I could do it if it was my $17,000 house. I could knock it down. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. He did seem very confident, like when he was talking about that separating mean the. He can do it. I can do it. I'm I... kind of keen to pay 17 grand to see him do it. To be honest, <laughs> it would be a pretty boring video. <laughs> 22 degrees today. I'm um, just sort of cruising into the week. It's going to jump right up to 31 tomorrow. 36 on Wednesday. Might Whoa. have to invest in those dog shoes that Bell was telling me about. Oh yeah, the oh. shoes for your dog. Well, yeah, they're shoes, but they're stickers. You put them on the bottom of your dog's paws, so if you take them for a walk, it protects their hands from the hot concrete. Are they hands or feet? Yeah, the dogs don't have hands, man. Yeah, sorry, they have paws. I think about my then cat again, and cats have feet. Then again, when you, like, I'll do the trick where I'll ask my dog Toby to shake. Yep. So I sort of think of his front legs as his hands. As his hands and his back as his, as his feet. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I feel like we're in that debate. You know that thing online where it's like, if dogs wore pants, where do they wear it? Yeah, it's, and so, it's either yeah. on all four legs <laughs> yeah. or it's it just feels the like back leg. We could potentially throw the show out and just go, do dogs have hands? <laughs> like, you could, you know, I reckon enough people would be thinking about that now that we could, we'd get lots of calls. Hey, if you live in the eastern suburbs, specifically if you're lucky enough to live in Kew, you may have heard a bit of Katy Perry on the weekend. Katy Perry's randomly in Australia. I saw she was at um, 
Taylor's show on Friday night in Sydney. Yep. So, yeah, she then flew down to here, to Melbourne, and then Saturday night was just doing a private gig um, at, you might know it as just the big red brick mansion on Studley Park Road in Kew, the Rohina State. It's like an 1800s, beautiful old estate, gorgeous. Um, and there lives the Pratts, like Anthony Pratt, who's head of Vizzy, you know, he does the recycling and paper and packaging and stuff. Chris Pratt's father. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Pratt. So they're like billionaires mm. and they threw this huge intimate party on Saturday night. So yeah, Katy Perry was performing there. Apparently she was paid like 1.5 mil to oh, be there, man. which is and amazing. She, w- she would have done like five songs, right? Like she just totally. would have rolled out the hits. Oh, and then she's got so many of them. Make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. Just eating a few prawns after that. What do they, do they get her in the garage or what do they... It was, a, it was a garden party, apparently. Right. Okay. It's so um, crazy. Like, I know Q is like a very nice suburb, mm. and I know that it's a billionaire family. It's just so crazy that the idea of Katy Perry being so in weird. the suburbs of Melbourne <laughs> so playing a show. It's not that far away from me, us here in Clarendon Street, South Melbourne. It's but like, strange. And didn't, because I, I think, um, I didn't know about this, because the, the PM went, and I think he, he yeah. sort of copped a bit of heat for that. Was Albo there as Albo well? Albo was there. Um, So Albo was there, and then he was also at Taylor Swift on the weekend. Now, the thing is, Let's get like, around. you know, well, yeah. Well, I, so the there's... thing is, like, I kind of rate that, because, like, obviously it's, like, probably a bad look to be mixing with the elite, but. If someone was like, you want to come to my mate's house party, Katy Perry's playing, you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's kind of weird if you didn't, I mean, right? Yes, like, it's, Liam, a good, it's a good invite. I know you probably should, you know, I don't know, be running the country or something. This but. is the thing, right? So, the, yes, but people are kicking up a fuss because he was there and at Taylor Swift while there was like fires raging in the west of Victoria. Yeah. And he doesn't the hold temperatures home, were soaring. <laughs> I know that was a different yeah. PM, but different it's, it's, PM. Yeah, yeah, look, I get it. I it's it's one of those the one weird things. One thing you don't do ever is don't say I don't hold yeah, holes, mate. That's, that's doesn't the, go well. The but one also, thing you can't say. The one thing is if there's fires, don't go just party. You know? So yeah. that, that that's the It's that's hard cuz I I so get it from a sense that it's a bad look, but on the flip I'm like I wouldn't pass that up. <laughs> yeah, you know I guess I, mean? I guess the other reason it's a bad look. I'm also not the Prime Minister of Australia. But also less uh, less on the Q house party with Katy Perry, more on going to Taylor Swift. Like, you know he didn't buy those tickets. He would have got the, given those tickets. Yeah. He probably isn't a massive Swifty head. There'd be people who would kill for the tickets. Yeah. I guess that's probably didn't also you, why. Just a weird thought popped into my head. Mm. On the last Taylor Swift tour, mm. didn't you sit next to Scott Scomo, Morrison? Scomo, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah Ben. Scomo. I remember Ben sent me a photo of him. Uh, Where were you yeah. sitting in, like the VIP box? Or I wasn't something? sitting directly next to him. He was in a box, right. and I was like, "Oh my!" And I was near the box, and I was like, "Oh my god!" There's Scott Morrison. That's so funny. And he, to be honest, looked like he was kind of getting into it. I think he was there with his daughter. Yeah, because he knows that people would be filming. Yeah, you, know, you got to look. Well, like you the rumor yeah. was he was actually going to support and do April Sun in Cuba um, <laughs> on the on the ukulele, um, but obviously they couldn't work it out with his management. Um. I would love to know thirteen, twenty, four, ten. This is a massive long shot. We might kind of not come back to this, but I would love to know if you a went to the Q mansion party yeah. over the weekend. And you saw Katy Perry, or B, <laughs> if you were just a neighbour. Yeah. If you were one of the hundred billionaires that was at this party, and, <laughs> yeah. and you happened to be listening to Nova, I mean, yeah, why not? I don't know, maybe... Yeah, if you were, if you live near it though, and you saw a bit of a, a crowd around mm. or whatever, if you live near that estate, which lucky you, uh, yeah, thirteen, twenty, four, ten, we'd they, love to chat. They also might have had uh, like caterers catering the party, and oh, you yeah. might have, you might have been working mm. on the night. <laughs> 13, 24, 10, if you were working or if you were attending the mansion party with Katy Perry in queue over the weekend, <laughs> we would love to speak to you. We always love a bit of a star spotting on the show. We've got an anonymous tip-off uh, that's come through, uh, 13, 24, 10. Um, I say anonymous, but the guy's name's Henry. Um, <laughs> uh, Henry, uh, you, you saw a big star this morning on your way to work. I did. I did. It's not often you see someone uh, quite as big as Scotty Pippen at Southern Cross, just at Daniel's Donuts. What? It's, hang you on. You saw <laughs> Chicago Bulls superstar Scotty Pippen at Daniel's Donuts. Unless there's someone else that tall walking around, I'm pretty sure it was. <laughs> Dude. Out, then, of I, ten, look, out of 10, how, sh- how sure are you it was Scotty Pippen? At least a nine point five. <laughs> that's a pretty. Strong... I mean, that's that's a strong Pippin number. I mean, I know, look. I I would say no way, but I do know Scotty Pippin. He was at like Caulfield Racecourse on the weekend. I know he's in Melbourne, but like, why is he at the train station getting donuts? I mean, Daniel's donuts—they're lovely. But he I might mean... just love donuts. 
He's American. They they love donuts. They do love donuts. They do, yes. Which one? Which one? Line somewhere, maybe. So it was at the train station, Henry. It was. It was. It was just lining up um, whether to get a coffee or a donut. Or a donut not sure. But so, and was this like was this like earlier this morning or just like just recently? Yeah, yeah just coming into work this morning. Dude. Yeah, right. well, Henry, look, we appreciate the tip-off. Thank you very much. No worries. I love that we're just a, a show you can call up and give anonymous tip-offs to. Like, I saw this celebrity. Do I go down I'm there? I'm 90% sure I saw it. <laughs> Great. Should, should, I, should I go down, Ben and Bell, and see if I can... You like Scotty. See if I, I can get think, Pippin on the phone. I don't think Pippin But he's still... easy to spot. He is. He's a giant. He's a Chicago ball. Yeah, but I don't think he would still be there, even, imagine, even if it was him. Could you imagine? Just think about this for one <laughs> second, Okay. Imagine if before the show's out this morning at 9 o'clock, we have an exclusive interview with six-time NBA champion, Scotty Pippen. It does sound pretty good. Yeah, it does. So hang on, you would you would go now? Yeah. Oh, from a donut. I know, I know the way to his heart. <laughs> <laughs> so you would yeah. go to Daniel's Donuts? Dude, I'll leave literally right now. What if he's not there? Well... It's worth a shot, right? Do you think he would agree to be on the radio show? I think so. I mean, you would hope so. If you're willing to go down there to try and get Scotty Pippen on the show, I wouldn't stop you. You know, what if after... What if, Bell, after the Bulls won three times and Jordan left, what if Phil Jackson said, hmm, what if we don't win another three times? You know what I mean? What if they called it there? But they didn't, did they? And they won another three. They did the three-peat repeat. So why don't we stop asking ourselves what if it doesn't work and we start telling ourselves it will work because that's what winners do and that's how winning's done. I'm going to speak to Scotty Pippen. <laughs> oh, okay. Liam's leaving. leaving. Oh, <laughs> Liam's leaving. Liam's leaving. on the show before we finish. <laughs> what I will say, that music is quite inspirational. It's good music, isn't I'm, it? It's I'm, very I'm, good. I've flipped. <laughs> All right, well, you've just joined us. Looks like Liam has literally left the studio. He's going down to Daniel's Donuts. Supposedly, listener Henry saw Scotty Pippen getting a donut and a coffee. Liam joins us now at Daniel's Donuts. You got us, Liam? Oh, my God, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, jeez. I have seen him. The eagle has landed. He is here. Mr. Scotty Pippen. It is confirmed. The, the call that we got from Henry, uh, I, I didn't believe it myself. But, yeah, he, for some reason, he's at Daniel's Donuts, Southern Cross <laughs> Station. There's, like, tons of people here. <laughs> so it was well worth my time coming down. Uh, how's it looking? How does Pippen look? Uh, look, it, he looks... He looks hungry, to be honest. He's actually st- he's genuinely gazing at a box of donuts at the moment, and um, people are taking photos of him. He's, he does have his shades on, so I don't know if it's oh. big night or something. Or, yeah, right. Um, right. And he, he's got a hoodie. He's got a fair crew, and like he's super tall, right? He's like almost mm. seven foot, like kind of like my height and Ben's height. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh. But you should see the security guards, man, because imagine how big the security guards have to be yeah. to guard someone who's seven foot. You know what I'm saying? And so is, um, is there a bit of a crowd there or has it looked... Oh my the God, there's really so confused. many people. Just like, Yeah, well, look, you've got, you know, you've got, um, you know, the train coming in from Traug and Melton, South Geelong. They're just sort of, it, it's, it's all like piling in here and people just walking off their train, commuting to work. And then everyone's like, oh my God, is that Scotty Pippen eating donuts? <laughs> and so that's like, people are just taking photos. So I'm, I'm going to try, I'll try and like move my way in, but maybe just, I reckon, look, it's going to take a while to move through these people. So just play a song, but I, I guarantee after this, I will have Scotty Pippen for you on this radio show. Oh, my God. This is huge. <laughs> Liam has left the studio. He's gone to Daniel's Donuts. Liam is at Daniel's Donuts, and he's got Scotty Pippen in his sights. Liam, are you there still? Yes, I'm here. I can see the great man himself. I'm very excited. Uh, I, I'm here with six-time NBA champion, seven-time NBA All-Star, Mr. Scotty Pippen. You're live on Nova 100 with Ben Lamb and Bell. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing this morning? Man, I love your voice. Have you ever thought about doing radio? Uh, yes, I know i got a very uh, deep voice, oh, but uh, no, it, it hasn't been anything that I've followed, but... Oh, look, I, I, I got a great voice. Yeah, and look, I think you've been pretty successful at what you have chosen to do, quite obviously. Have you been enjoying your time in Melbourne? Yes, it's been great. Uh, the weather's been awesome. Uh, the people, the food. Yes, I've enjoyed my week and three or four days here. Yeah, and so you're just down to Daniel's Donuts this morning for some brekkie, I assume? Excuse me? Just here for some breakfast? Yeah, I came here and got me some uh, Daniel's Donuts. I wanted to give them a try. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, 
it was worth traveling. Well, look, it's, it's an exciting time for us here in Australia at the moment. A lot of stars from the US over, uh, yourself, Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, all here. Have you been rubbing shoulders with, with A-listers from back home? Uh, no, I, I didn't quite rub shoulders with her, but we were at the same hotel. Oh, okay. Uh, and I know she has... Uh, our final show in Sydney tonight, so maybe I'll rub shoulder or bump against her tonight. Uh, we're, we're headed to Sydney today. What about uh, Mr. Luke Longley, obviously the Australian counterpart of that iconic Bulls team. Have you been hanging out with him since you've been down here? Yeah, I've been hanging out with my guy Luke Longley and uh, Horace Grant. We came over and uh, we're on a little bit of a tour called the No Bull Tour, uh, talking about our careers and uh, what a great run to be a part of one of the greatest NBA teams. Well, Scotty, absolute legend, mate. Look, um, look, I want to just give you a small present. I mean, when we, we talk basketball here, there's a name that pops into our heads, Mr. Andrew Gaze. Yes. I don't know if you know, he brought out his own sneaker line, the oh, Gazers. Well, hey, Gaze is this big here. <laughs> yeah. I, I like his sneaker line. So look, I really I, like is the color. Yeah, Bulls red. Uh, so I'm, I'm just, well, these are I for know, you. I know real men's wear red. So yeah. uh, <laughs> You're a size 10 US, yeah? Oh, uh, yes. Ten? Um, <laughs> yeah, when I was ten. Yeah. Okay. What are those? What are those? <laughs> uh, I, I wear a little more than a ten, about a fifteen. Okay. You might be able to squeeze into them. Anyway, thank yeah. you so much for your time this morning, my man. What a legend. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. That was awesome. He was such a nice guy. Liam, he's still oh there. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm there. I just spoke to Scotty Pippen from the Chicago Bulls. Oh, my God. He was so nice. Dude, how cool. I just was, like, when I was talking with his voice and stuff, I, I wanted to call him sexy, but I thought it would have been weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's, now, so, I, it's such I'm, a nice voice. I'm now jealous that I didn't leave with you to go to Daniel's Donuts Dude. to meet Scotty Pippen. Yeah, everyone laughed. They said, why would Scotty Pippen be at Daniel's Donuts, Southern Cross Station? But I said no. Uh, you know, and I, I think of myself as, the, you know, the real Michael Jordan here, or the, or the Scotty Pippen, Absolutely. or the, you know, the Horace Grant, or any of those guys. Liam, you know? did you did you give him the pair of gazers, the Andrew Gaze sneakers? Yeah, I I gave him the gazers, and he was polite <laughs> enough to take them. But he was just thinking, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the f? I don't know. I wanted to give like a peace offering. He was so nice. I mean, like, we we got a fair chat with him there. That was like at least like what two three minutes. Were with him? you were you filming any of that? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Jack um, was, was filming the whole damn thing. Uh, so oh, uh, look, we'll, we'll chuck it. some Instagram stories up. I'll, I'll come back to the studio, but yeah, it'll be all over the Instagram so you know it wasn't just me doing my famous Scotty Pippen impersonation. Yeah, the absolutely. Train station. Oh my God, I've got to see that. <laughs> Liam with Scotty Pippen, uh, Instagram, Ben Liam and Bell. Chuck the video up there on the socials. That was such a good chat. He's yeah, such a nice guy. I'm very proud of Liam. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.